Hello. Key number seven, the chariot. Chess. C H E T H. C H and H as in help. Value number eight is pronounced K H A Y T H. It means a field and the fence enclosing it. Fence suggests enclosure protection, defense, specific location, an area set apart for cultivation. It also implies shielding, safeguard, refuge, safety. Thus, it corresponds to the ideas represented by the words carapace and shell. The idea of location refers back to house or beth, as does that of shelter. A cultivation field is in contrast to the open country. Cultivation, again, is suggested by the gardens of the magician and the empress. Again, the enclosure of a particular area is a fence that happens to be a mental world when we define anything. So that ch is also related to h, considering the definite article. Speech is a human function attributed to ch by the Kabbalists. Speech defines. Words are like fences enclosing a particular field of consciousness. The field of speech continually engages the labors of the practical occultist and applied psychologist. The attribution of speech to Chef is therefore indicates that words have preser preservative and protective power, that right use of language is a means to safety. Extend the meaning of speech from the spoken word to the unspoken words of thought and you will understand why the wise have always attached so much importance to right speech. Intelligence of the House of Influence is the Kabbalistic name for the mode of consciousness corresponding to Che. Literally it is the consciousness of that which is abode of inflowering power. In flowing power. <laughs> okay. It is consciousness of the fact that human personality is like a fenced in area wherein universal forces are at work. These forces flow into personality from beyond its boundaries, taking form in the silent speech of thought and finding utterance in the spoken word. They flow out through personality into actual expression and manifestation. East below is represented on the cube of space by the line or edge connecting the lower ends of the vertical lines, northeast and southeast. This edge marks the junction of the eastern and bottom faces of the cube, attributed representatively to Delith and Venus, to Gimel and the moon, keys three and two, the empress and the high priestess. Here is an Timid intimidation, I N T I M A T I O N, that through self conscious elements are evolved, involved, the mental activities symbolized by the key seven are carried out at the subconscious level. A little self study will convince you that your thought and speech are, <coughs> are largely subconscious in origin. <coughs> Shh, Annie. Your vocabulary depends on subconscious associative <coughs> processes. <coughs> Shh. All these take shape below the self-conscious level. Now, Cancer the Crab, which is the sign, hush, a cardinal watery sign is attributed to Ch. Here we see the connection between the letter name fence and the crab's hard carapace. Carapace? C-A-R-A-P-A-C-E. Cancer is ruled by the moon, key to the high priestess, and the planet Jupiter, key 10, wheel of fortune, is exalted there. Cancer governs the breast, the chest, offensive bones, and the stomach. It is a psychic receptive sign. Its natives are said by astrologers to be endowed with 
Tenacious Memory, Tenacious, T E N A C I O U S, Memory. And this is in accordance with the basic meaning of the letter name Chet, C H E T H. And the color scale, the tint assigned to cancer is yellow orange, orange yellow. The corresponding musical tone is D sharp or E flat. The chariot is the usual title of key seven. Sometimes it's the charioteur, which is even better since the picture, as Dr. Waite says, is really the king in his triumph. Typifying, however, the victory which creates kingship is a natural consequence. Note that the number of the card seven is that which Kabbalists assign the idea of victory. In the background is a walled city. The wall is a stone fence. The city is a collection of houses corresponding to the ideas relating to Beth and the magician. The windows of some of the buildings are clearly shown, indicating that what is represented by Heth and the Emperor is also behind the surface meaning of this key number seven. The wall, however, is most clearly established the correspondence of the trunk to Sheth and the fence. Trees and a river in the middle distance remind us of the symbolism of key three, the Empress. This is correct because speech is not only composed of definitions, but also embodies mental imagery, which is Empress, and gives form to the stream of consciousness. As the river in tarot rises from the watery substance of the robe of the high priestess, and as trees are associated with the rich fertility of the Empress garden, here, too, is the combination suggested by the east below, east Empress and below high priestess. The chariot itself is a movable fence corresponding to the letter chest. Its body is a cube, carrying out the symbolism of the cubes whereon the High Priestess and Emperor sit. Moreover, it is of gray stone, so that it combines the notions of wisdom, which is gray, and the union of father-son, suggested by the Kabbalistic meaning of Ebn, Ebn Stone. Surmounting the body of the chariot are four pillars, supporting a star starry canopy. The number four is the number of the order and measurement. It refers also to the four elements, fire, water, air, and earth. Each pillow is divided into two equal parts, remaining, reminding us of the hermetic actium, actium, A-X-I-O-M. That which is above is that which is below. The point of division at the center of each pillar is surrounded by a ring. This is the symbol of spirit, for the rings are circles, like zero signs. <laughs> the idea is that each of the four elements are encircled by the one spirit. The starry canopy represents the celestial forces. Their descend into the physical plane through the activity of the four elements is of the cause of all external manifestation. Thus, the stars in the azure canopy symbolizes the correlation of the influences of distant suns and planets of zodiacal constellations and of human forces. This canopy, therefore, represents the forces which sur surround the Earth and seem to be above us in the sky. It represents also the subtle metaphysical forces which are above the level of personality. It is therefore a symbol of what Elijah Levi has called the astral light. The shield of the face of the car has the same significance as the letter name. The wall is in the background in the car itself. The red symbol on the shield is one form of the Hindu lingam yonai, typifying the union of positive and negative forces in action, which is red. In some old tarot keys, the shield builds the bears the letters B.T. written in the periods at the left of the letters to show that they are to be read like Hebrew from right to left. So reading they spell the Hebrew word Tav, T.V. This is the name of the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. To an occultist this conveys the same fundamental idea as the lingam yonai because the original character, the Tav, was a cross combining the vertical masculine line with the feminine horizontal line. 
like the cross of the breast of the high priestess. <coughs> Above the shield is a variation of the Egyptian wing globe. The globe is yellow, suggesting self-consciousness. Because our yellow color scale, yellow corresponds to Mercury and the magician. The wings are blue, like the robe of the high priestess. They are symbols of aspiration. The charioteur is crowned, and the crown is surmounted by three golden pentagrams. The pentagram represents mental dominion. Three are shown because of the control we exert over cosmic forces by right use of the power of speech does really extend over three worlds. The detail of symbolism agrees with the older forms of the tarot symbolism. In the Rider Pack, the diagram, D-I-A-D-E-M, is a golden eight-pointed star, having much the same meaning as the pentagrams, but more particularly emphasizing the idea of the cosmic order typified in tarot by the Wheel of Fortune and its eight spokes. <coughs> this order is the expression of the supervising authority of the One Self, symbolized in Key 17 by a golden eight-pointed star. The charioteur's hair is fair, like that of the Empress and the Fool, on the shoulders are lunar crescents, indicating the rulership of the moon in Cancer. His C-U-I-R-A-S-S, -S, caress, is greenish yellow or the color of brass to show that it symbolizes the protective powers of creative imagination represented in tarot by the Empress, inasmuch as brass is a metal sacred to Venus. A square on the curious represents order and purity by its shape and color, and on the three black T's, which stand for the limiting powers of Saturn. They also like the VT, and older versions refer to the letter Tav. The charlatur's golden belt suggests a light and is ornamented with the indistinct signs, among which one is plainly the astrological symbol for Cancer. The position of this belt, moreover, suggests the slanting circle of the elliptic. It represents time and influences of stellar influences, stellar forces. The skirt below the curious is divided into eight parts, and it's ornamented with geometric symbols in making magical talismans. They typify dominion over terrestrial forces. The charlatan scepter is surrounded by the figure eight combined with a crescent. This is a combination of the symbol over the magician's head with the lunar crown of the high priestess. Thus the rider's ensign of authority shows that the dominion is a result of the blending of the powers of the self-consciousness with those of subconsciousness. Everything about the charlatan charioteur <laughs> suggests that he sums up all the powers and potent poten potencies of the personages who have preceded him in the series of major trumps and in their synthesis. S-Y-N-T-H-E-S-I-S. He is also the true self, the master power behind all forms of life expression. He has led capa capacity captive. He is a conquest on all planes, in mind and in science, and in progress of certain trials of initiation. He is above all things Trump in the mind. Triumph in the mind. Trump in the mind. The car symbolizes its canopy and cubicle body of the combination of the celestial and terrestrial forces. Viewed from the front, it is the form of an oblong square. Thus, it corresponds to the traditional Masonic form of the Lodge. The Lodge corresponds to the Temple, which we have highest authority for the doctrine that human personality is living in the Temple of the Most High. Thus, the Chariot is truly the house of influence and stands for human personality as a vehicle, a channel of self-expression, through which the omnipresent self manifests its dominion over things. The sphinxes, which draw the card, are the innovation suggested. Older versions of the tarot show horses. 
which are sometimes joined together like Siamese twins. The horses are sun symbols. The sphinxes combined animal and human attributes, suggested a force of common to men and animals. Their contrasting colors are like the contrast between the pillars of the high priestess. Moreover, the white sphinx wears a be be beneficent expression. B-E-N-E-F-I-C-E-N-T. While the features of the black one show a forbidding frown, the white sphinx is a symbol of mercy. The black one is severity. Note that their contrasting expressions are similar to those of the human faces in the lunar crescents on the rider's shoulders. By mythological illusion, the sphinx represents the senses, which are continually propounding riddles. Here they are shown at rest, thus agreeing with the notion of rest which Hebrew occultism attributes to the number seven. The yellow wheels of the chariot refer to the light energy, but particularly to Pacific activities associated in tarot with the planet Jupiter. This is the planet exalted in the sign of Cancer. It is represented in tarot by the tenth major trump called the Wheel of Fortune. Jupiter, astrologer says, rules the circulation of the blood because it has to do with forms of rotation and circular movement. To this picture we assign the psychological idea of receptive, receptivity equals will. The unin U -N -I -N -I -T -A T I A T E D U N I N I T I A T E D belief their will to be something originating in personality. The occultist without in the least denying the fact denying the fact that free will is part of our equipment refuses to believe that personal free will exists. For the occultist all that we mean by V O L I T I O N volition is a synthesis of innumerable cosmic influences coming to a focus at a point within us. Hence all great initiatives say, with Jesus, of myself I can do nothing. For the same reason Jacob wrote, if thou cast my son for a while but cease from all thy thinking and willing, then shalt there hear the unspeakable words of God. When thou art quiet and silent, then art thou as God was before nature and creature. Thou art with God, then was. Thou art that of which he made thy nature and creature. Then thou hearest us and seest even that with, with God himself saw and heard in thee before ever thine own willing or thine own seeing began. The more perfectly we understand that the office of human personality is to serve as a vehicle for cosmic forces, the more freely does primal will behind all manifestation find expression through us. To others we may seem to have a very strong personal will. We ourselves will learn from our practice that the strength of our vile Volition, B O L I T I O N, is measured by the degree of our willingness to let life find unobstructed manifestation through us. This willingness takes form in thought and word and through itself in unuttered speech. It is a willingness developed through purposeful concentration. Relaxation of the body, passivity of the mind, one pointed attention to the real presence in our personal field of the limitless powers of the whole universe. With progressive freedom in the expression of those powers as our dominant purpose, this is the infallible practical formula for Trump in the mind and elsewhere. Express express subconsciousness again and again with the suggestion that the vehicle for universal will base these suggestions on reason. See that the one energy enters into all modes of power, celestial and terrestrial. Self-examination will convince you 
that not the least of your personal action is anything more or less than a particular manifestation in time and space of some phase of the sum total of the cosmic influences. At our present stage of mental development, perfect conceptions of this truth may be impossible. But reasonable ones we may have at a little expense of observation and reason. Subconsciousness is the vehicle through which all plans, ideas, designs, inventions, and forces enter into the personal field. Thought and speech are potent in mounting subconscious response. Furthermore, because subconsciousness is also the body building and body changing power, suggestions of the type here indicated will eventually make profound alterations in physical structure so that it becomes able to transform into personal activities, cosmic forces whose very existence is unsuspected by the greatest number of human beings. <clears throat> Complete receptivity is the secret of the most powerful manifestation of will. Receptivity may increase by control of language. Herein lies the key to all mighty works of practical occultism, for all magic is in the will.